Hey, I'm Dr. Neil Renault, and I'm an optometrist at Eagle Eye Performance Vision. Thanks for tuning in with us today. I want to uh, talk to you guys about a device we use in our office called Right Eye. And uh, in our office, we work with a lot of children and adults who have vision problems that interfere with their ability to read, to learn, to comprehend, and even sometimes to pay attention. So we're able to find and diagnose these vision problems that often have been undiagnosed. They could mimic ADD, ADHD, dyslexia, learning disabilities. We work with a lot of kids who are performing below their academic potential. For whatever reason, they're just not able to stay up, stay at grade level in reading. They could come home with headaches or a lot of fatigue, a lot of frustration during homework. It seems like they're, they're kind of skipping around and losing their place a lot when they're reading. This is a wonderful tool that helps us find and diagnose those vision problems that have been slipping through the cracks and holding those kids back. So I want to walk you through the entire functional vision IQ test that we do with every single patient we work with. Um, there's, di there's several different tests that, that it's able to find those problems and really, really distinguish functional vision versus dysfunctional vision, how it interferes in the classroom. So the, this test, the patient actually sits right in front of it and the panel right here has sensors that can see where the patient's eyes are at. Our eyes give a reflection and the panel picks up those reflections. Um, and then the, the test goes through ver various different eye movements that the patient needs to do. So the first one is called pursuits or tracking a moving target. And here we're doing circular pursuits. And so we actually can, this is an actual patient we've worked with we can replay exactly where their eyes are pointing while they're trying to track that moving target. So the first test, there's a dot moving in a circle around the screen about this big, about this speed. The dot's moving constantly and the patient needs to track it the entire time for about, about 10 seconds or so. So we can see as I replay this video, there's this patient struggling. It should be a perfect circle every time, every time around making a perfect circular shape struggling right here to coordinate both eyes together in a circular fashion. So we see, we see several different problems here. There's first, it's just inaccuracy, difficulty maintaining accurate fixation on the moving target. There's also a lot of jerky movement. So it doesn't look very smooth if you watch it again. There's lots of quick jumps instead of smoothly and, and slowly tracking that target. Uh, and we also see fixation losses where they could be tracking for a few seconds and then their, their eyes jump away from the target. They lose, their, their eyes are not able to stay on target. So these are circles. This next one is going to be horizontal pursuits, kind of like tracking right across the page. This should be, we've got the right eye and the left eye should be able to stay right on target as the dot goes smoothly across the screen. And you can see some big jumps in there. We can see some, some of those fixation losses where this patient lost where the target was. And you know, really as this as we continue to progress through it, you can see that it's not a perfectly smooth straight across line. And uh, you, you see there's different flight paths where the patient's going over and over, although the dot on the screen is not necessarily doing that. It's just going smoothly straight across over and over. So here it is again, we can see there are some jerky movements losing the target, kind of re jumping back and forth, kind of like that child who skips words or, or repeats lines. Let's look next at vertical pursuits. And this patient ironically did best on vertical, but unfortunately we don't read up and down, we read across the page. So this patient was very symptomatic for reading, even though they actually were able to track up and down on that target pretty good. Right eye and left eye moving upward, and then back down. Now the next part of the test is a completely different skill. These are called saccades or making quick scanning movements. So when we read our eyes look at a word and then they jump to the next word and they jump to the next word. Scan ahead and find the next word. Finish a line and then jump all the way to the next line. We make very quick, precise, accurate movements and these need to be automatic, efficient, and, and precise as we jump word to word. If a patient is having to spend extra effort on finding the next word, that's going to interfere with their ability to comprehend what they're reading, the speed of their reading, um, not missing anything. They're, they're able to put the whole picture together 
that's the, these are things that are interfered with. So here there's two dots on the screen, just where my fingers are, and we're seeing how the patient jumps their eyes back and forth between the two targets. So I'll zoom in a bit so we can see it a, a little better. And now the patient is supposed to be jumping back and forth over the same line, same path every time. We can see that it's not the same path every time. It's kind of one time it's up, one time it's down. There's some zigzags in there. It should be a straight line. And if you can tell, there's little bullseyes here and here where the right eye and left eye showing how accurate they are at hitting those targets. You can see that there's a lot of, a lot of inaccuracy, inaccuracy, especially over here. So that patient has a hard time when they're looking at a word, finding the next word and pointing their eyes accurately to that word is a challenge for this patient. And the next one is vertical, make, making quick jumps vertically. And once again, this patient did better going up and down. You can see, see the difference. It's a very similar flight path over and over. Um, pretty close to the bullseye every time. See, that one's really close. Um, all, all four bullseyes are fairly consistently hit and not so many of those zigzag, uh, not, not, not able to repeat the pattern over and over. So, but again, we're not reading Chinese or Mandarin, we're, we're reading it in English where you have to go across left to right. This improved skill going up and down has not really helped this patient learn how to read the English language or Spanish. And the last test we look at is fixation stability. So those kids who are a little, little squirmy, have a hard time uh, staying still in their chair, have a hard time concentrating. We see the same thing in their eyes. Visual attention and visual concentration is a skill, the ability to hold your eyes steady and process what you're seeing. So a lot of kids have, have a challenge, challenging time doing that. If they're looking at a word and trying to process what it is, their eyes have a hard time holding still and it can be moving around a bit on the screen. So this test looks at, for 21 seconds, seven, three rounds of seven seconds, they're instructed to just look at a target. So look very still right at this target. Don't let your eyes move for seven seconds. And we do that three times. Every millisecond, we get a, we get a measurement of where their eyes are at. So you can, let's look at the right eye first. Right eye did actually pretty good at keeping a lot of data points pretty centralized in that bullseye but the patient did drift off pretty frequently too. So difficulty with holding the, holding the eyes steady, the right eye. Now the left eye, we can see that their left eye really struggled quite a bit more. There's not so many point, data points in that center and quite a few of them, she, this patient actually drifted downward below the target. So not only did, does this patient have a hard time with visual concentration holding still, but it's asymmetric between each eye. The right eye is probably, probably this patient's more dominant eye, and the left eye is, is drifting around, not really holding its weight, not, not uh, playing on the same team, basically. So our job from here, now that we've, we were able to diagnose these vision problems in, a pa in this patient, was put them through vision therapy with, with uh, lenses that, that help this patient function better in school right away, and vision therapy where we did exercises in our office to improve the visual skills that were deficient so that now this patient is able to find the word that, that they're looking for, find it clearly, precisely, accurately, and automatically, minimal effort, so that we, you know, we should not have to put a whole lot of effort into finding the next word. It should be automatic and spend all of your attention on processing what you see. This patient is able to control their eyes much better now. There is a much dip, greatly improved um, test replay that we did later on that, that uh, correlated with a lot of improvements in school. So comprehension improved, reading speed improved, spelling improved, um, not losing their place on while reading and, and skipping around and, and kind of losing themselves. Some kids actually see letters move like, like they're floating or swimming they'll, they'll say, or wiggling. They'll say, make comments like that, which obviously is extremely disruptive to reading. So that's our job is find these problems treat them, improve them, and then see how that translates into the real world in school. Because if you can't find where the next word is, you're not going to be able to know what that next word is. Uh, that's our job. That's how we help these kids who are struggling in school and get them caught up to what their potential is capable of. 
And uh, we encourage you, if you have any questions about this, call our office at, at 616-848-7548. Check us out online at eagleeyevisiontherapy.com. And this, like I said, every single patient that goes through an evaluation with us does this test. If you mention that you saw this video today or, or um, as we post it later, if you mention you saw it, we'll actually take the, the cost of that test off of our, our total evaluation. So uh, a little promotion for this and since you're tuning in with me and learning about this, uh, hopefully if, if this is something that connects with you and your child and you want to have the test done, just mention that and we'll subtract that from the total evaluation. Uh, if you have any questions about specifically about right eye, throw them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you and, and respond. And just keep in touch. This vision is so integral in learning, and we are just trying to play our part in helping those kids succeed and improve something that has been really holding them back so long. So we hope to hear from you. Thank you so much for tuning in with us today, and uh, have a great rest of your day.